Are there also some things that scare you about technology and the future? I'm scared that we don't have a good framework for AI ethics, but I'm more scared when we try to apply a universal framework to everybody on AI ethics. And so that is going to be the balance that we get to. People are going to say, oh, that is completely evil. Now, I'll give you a fun example. I don't know if this, it was used before, but autonomous vehicles, right? You get two, two cars get into an accident, right? And the accident occurs in China and someone hits, a, hits someone and someone gets injured, right? In China, the algorithm might be run that person over three more times because it's cheaper than keeping them alive, right? That's the financial cost benefit. In Canada, it might be, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, how can I help you? People will be very polite, I'm taking stereotypes to the extreme, but you get what I'm saying, right? In Russia, it might be, no, none of us did it, everyone deny plausibility, and you know, here's the video cam that's been doctored. Right? And I don't know, right? But this is my point. These are all interesting examples that may occur. Right. So, so I think what we're trying to figure out is what is the universal human code? And we can't answer that question. And in the meantime, I think we're going to push the limits. And when we get to that crucial point, I hope the populace is educated enough when they make their decision. Right. And that's the thing. I think we need to continue to educate people on the implications of technology, what it means to your life, what it means to your business, what it means to society. And we need to actually take a much more holistic view.